Hey everybody, welcome back to Champ and Sons in our NCAA baseball series with the Texas Longhorns. And we have got a showdown today in this episode versus the defending champion, Auburn Tigers. Now we are early on in the season and they are struggling. You saw the record at 25 and 32. Well, we are kind of bouncing back off our uh, down season last year. So this is going to be an interesting matchup. Like I said, they are defending champions. We've got something to prove. And really taking on a team of this caliber is one way to do that. So we're going to get this one started in Auburn as Marino Vasquez comes to the plate to face off against Johnny O'Brien. Vasquez batting 345 this year and just add another one to his tally as that one goes right up the middle. One pitch, one hit. That's the kind of offense that we like to see here at Texas as he drives that one straight through, no chance to get it. A good solid shot, good timing on it, and just right past the pitcher and through the infield. So now he is standing on first. So with that, Bill Hamill comes to the plate, batting 270 on the year. And he's swinging at the first pitch as well, a grounder to shortstop. They go to second, try to turn two, but Hamill's too quick and he is safe at first. That is gonna be a fielder's choice. They do get Vasquez at second though. And so Hamill is now standing at first, but he does have a lot of speed. See if we can get him moving as Ramirez comes to the plate and they do a pitch out. They were ready. They were definitely ready for that. And so they do a pitch out to, to Ramirez, trying to bait Hamill into running. Ramirez is batting 270, so he's got a lot of potential. And he's going to hit another grounder right up the middle. Too slow to get uh, Hamill a second, so they do get Ramirez over at first. So he does his job in advancing the runner. But, man, it would have been nice if he had been able to get safe. But, thankfully, they did not turn two, so this inning is still going. Now Scott Burrows, batting 250 on the year, comes to the plate. Fouled off that first one and outs the fastball on the outside edge of the plate. Count is 0-1. So now here comes O'Brien with the 0-1 pitch. He delivers inside. Oh, man, that was a close call right there. Could have gone either way. That slider just nicked the edge, and the count is now 0-2. Burrows trying to be a little too selectful, I guess. Swing, and that's going to be a foul off. As, whew, got lucky right there. His timing is a little off. He's mixing up his speeds, and that's going to start to be a little bit of a problem for Burrows. 0-2 delivery once again. He's going to hit that one to the right side. It does get through. Hamill, he's rounding third. He's headed for home, and he's going to slide across the plate, and the Longhorns get the lead early in this one. Big time hit by Burroughs and Hamill with the aggressive base running. I mean, we know he's got the speed, but man, that's a risky maneuver. But it pulls off for him, and he gets the Longhorns an early lead here in the first inning. Now, Will Roberts, our third baseman, his first year here with the Longhorns, he swings and fouls off that first pitch. Batting 229 with eight home runs and 22 RBIs, so he does have some power behind his bat. Now, O'Brien will check Burroughs at first, although he doesn't have a whole lot of speed. Not really a threat to steal as the next pitch comes high for a ball. Count is evened up at 1-1. One and one. Roberts, as I mentioned, has eight home runs. That's tied for second on the number of home runs on the Longhorns. Next pitch is going to be a swing and a miss at an inside slider. He is painting that corner right there, painting that edge with that slider, looking like an old form of Greg Maddox, hitting the, hit, painting the black, essentially. So now one and two is a count to Roberts. Here trying to keep this inning alive with two outs in the top of the first. And the delivery comes in, and that's going to be a hit. That's going to get through the infield, and he will be safe. Roberts moves Burroughs over to second. Downside is on the base path, Roberts, he's not the fastest guy, but definitely Burroughs is not either. So we're going to have to get a pretty good hit if we're going to try to drive these two guys in. And here comes Curtis White batting 222 on the season. Facing off against O'Brien here, and the first pitch comes in. He's going to ground that one foul past the first baseman. Got a good, solid shot on it. Uh, just a little too quick with the bat head there. So 0-1 is the count now as O'Brien delivers a pitch. That's it. It hit him, but we checked up the swing, and he couldn't hold it back, so they're going to call it a strike. 0-2 the count with a bruise to his thigh. Curtis White standing in at the plate. As the pitch comes, that's going to be a foul pitch. Fouled off, so that it will remain at 0-2. White is battling right now. O'Brien checks the runners. Gets set and comes home with the 1-0-2 pitch, and that's going to be hit right to second baseman, and that is going to end the top half of this first inning. But, hey, damage was done. Burroughs delivered when we needed him, 
and the Longhorns will get one run off three hits here in the top of the first inning. An early lead. Let's see if we can't hold on to that one. Pitching for the Longhorns is going to be Howard Tucker. He's been on the mound 11 times with the 4-1 record. The 3.82 ERA, giving up 58 hits in 63 innings. And just a little less than a 2-1 to one walk, uh, strikeout to walk ratio. Definitely need to see some improvement there. So that might be something we have to focus on with him going on, going further in the season. And the first pitch is going to be swung. Ramirez fields that grounder and fires it over to first. And that's going to be out number one. One pitch, one out. Looks like both teams are going to be swinging aggressive coming up early whenever we get these strikes and early in the count here as we get set to face off against Auburn's number two hitter in their lineup. Now Tucker gets set with the pitch, and he winds up and delivers it home. That's going to be just outside for a ball. Longhorns are leading in the Big 12 right now at 38-19 with a record, and that's kind of rare for them. And he's going to hit that one up. Sanchez right through the middle. Credible went for the diving move, just couldn't get there in time. That was a hard hit, so Sanchez will end up on first for Auburn as they've got a base runner now. And that was a well played by Credible, just, just outside of his reach. Sometimes that happens, you know, just the way baseball goes. And now looking at him, he has a lot of speed, a big potential to steal. And we need to keep him out of scoring position. So Tucker gets set. He checks over at first and delivers that pitch. It's going to be a quick move. It's a little slide step there, and that one comes out for a ball. 1-0 is the count to Robert K. the Tigers' third batter with a 2.79 ERA, and he's got 12 doubles on the season, so he can put the bat to the ball. So 1-1 is the count. They do steal for second. The throw down to Credible, and he's going to be in just barely. That shows you the kind of speed he has. Sanchez gets his sixth stolen base on the season. Well, he read Tucker really well on that one. Got a good jump. And not much Manuel could do about that. Now, Kay's going to hit a line drive over to Ramirez, and that one is going to be out number two in the inning. So they do still have Sanchez at second, but out number two after that line drive. So here comes Roger Cortez batting 281 on the season, the cleanup hitter for the Tigers. And he's going to drive that one up the middle. That is going to get down. Sanchez is definitely going to score. Hamill fires it into second to keep him over at first. And this game is now tied up one to one each here. Right now in the bottom of the first inning, but there is still action to be had. Now facing off against Robbie Donnelly, batting 242. Tucker throws the first pitch in for a strike. 0 1 is the count. And the next one comes in across the plate. 0 2 is where he has him. And Donnelly. Pretty good at hitting himself, 51 hits so far on the season. And the 0-2 pitch is going to be an off-speed fouled off behind the plate. And so the count will remain at 0-2. Now Tucker delivers, and that one's just outside with another off-speed, and he doesn't chase it. So 1-2 and two is where we stand. And the next pitch is fouled down the right field side. No danger of that one falling in, so the count remains at 1-2. and two. Here we come. And the next pitch is inside, a fastball, just could not get a hold on it. Tucker trying to move quickly here, not really paying too much attention to first base, but it seems to be playing on his mind that run that scored earlier as he's now worked it to a full count. And the payoff pitch is going to be inside for a ball. We knew Tucker had an issue with his walk to strikeout ratio or strikeout to walk, however you want to view it, and he puts a man on free base right there. Now he's facing off against Clay Moore, who's batting 267 on the season. He's got pretty good hitting, and he's going to hit that one, a little blooper down the right field line. It's going to get in. Vasquez gets set, and they are going to get that run across as we throw it over to third, and now Auburn has taken the lead. And you know, their record is not really, I guess, reminiscent of what their talent actually is here. And now Tucker's in a little bit of problem. Having some control, losing a little bit of confidence. Two pitches into facing Richie Perez. And he's got the count even at 1-1 as Tucker delivers the next one low for a ball. 2-1 is the count now. Man on first and second. Tucker's next pitch comes outside for a ball. 3-1 at risk of letting this one get away from him. And that one's going to be fouled off across the plate. Probably should have held off, but hey, he swung at it anyways. And the count is evened up. So Tucker with the payoff pitch. Fouled once again, this time down the right field side. Still at full count, still battling here. Tucker and Perez both coming at each other hard. 
He's going to hit a high fly ball to center field. Hamill is on his horse and is able to chase that one down to end the inning, but we damage was done. We have lost the lead here in the first inning. Auburn Tigers put up two runs off three hits, and they lead 2-1 to one over the Longhorns after one. So now we are going to advance a little bit later on in this game as face off against Robbie Clark in for relief. As we are in the top of the ninth inning, the game is now tied at 2-2. Each offense has been stymied pretty well. Curtis White at the plate. He's 0 for 2 on the day, trying to make it 1 for 3, and that ball does not get down. And that's going to be out number one here in the ninth inning. And so we're going to check in on our bullpen. We have David Pena warming up. I'm going to get Robbie Baker stretching just in case we need him. And following up, Curtis White is going to be Jose Viegas batting one for three today. That first pitch comes inside for a ball, count 1-0 and to Viegas. He's batting pretty for us pretty well um, on the season. He's not getting a whole lot of playing time just because, you know, we need, I think, a little bit more speed than what he offers. And he's going to swing and just pop that one up right behind the plate or beside the plate. And that's out number two now. <laughs> okay. Out number two. So two gone here in the top of the ninth inning. The game is tied at two apiece here in Auburn. And now Mike Ellis comes to the plate, sporting a one for three on the evening. Now Bobby Clark comes in with the pitch. It's going to be swung, and that's a high fly to right field. That should be easy enough, and that'll take us to the middle of the ninth inning. And we're going to actually advance on to the bottom of the 10th. We do have two outs now with one runner on third. Auburn is threatening to take this game one of the series away from us. And pitching, we still have David Pena in. He is going to be getting a little tired at this point. Um, but, hey, we need him to go dig deep and go that extra mile. As the third pitch is fouled off, and the count is now one and two to Luis, to Luis Sanchez, who's two for four on the day. And that's a high pop-up down left field line. Is it going to fall down foul? And Viegas just unable to catch it. Oh, just out of his reach, so the count remains one and two. Now Pena delivers the next pitch. It's going to be a sinker just out of the zone, just barely. Count two and two. Now he grabs that one up the middle to Credible. To finish off the inning, Credible fires it over to Burroughs at first. Inning over with. That was a big one for the Longhorns. Needed to get out of that. They were in a serious danger of losing. So now here we come to the top of the 11th. Pete Ryan stepping in. Um, for the Tigers on the mound facing off against Scott Burroughs. Now we have the extra inning rule, so runner is on second. And the first pitch into Burroughs just hits the corner. you got to be kidding me. But yeah, I can see why they're being careful. Burroughs is batting 353 with runners in scoring position this year. So the 0-1 delivery, he checked up on that one, and it comes in out of the zone for a ball, so the count is now even at 1-1. One and one. Looking at the Longhorn bullpen, they're getting some other guys warming up here to try to make sure we have a fresh arm here for the bottom of the 11th inning. Now Pete Ryan delivers a 1-1 pitch down low and inside for another ball, so the count is 2-1. and one. Burroughs looks like he's going to be able to be a little bit more selective as we get set to put uh, Andre Hammond in the game to give him full-blown warm-up movement is what it looks like. So now the 2-1 count to Burroughs as the pitch comes in. Just outside, three to one. Burroughs being quite selective in this game. And that's dangerous for the Tigers as uh, Will Roberts is going to be coming up next. So, you, I mean, I get being careful, but dang, sometimes you'd be a little too careful. Now, Ryan, three one is the count. He delivers a pitch. Burroughs, deep drive to left field. Oh, my goodness. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. No doubt about it. Burroughs got a hold of that one and blasted it. That's got to be well over 400 feet over the big wall in left field. And Burroughs, yeah, 427 feet, his seventh home run on the season. He got a hold of that one. I mean, geez, I get having to throw a strike, but, oh, my goodness. He put it just right over too much of the plate. And Burroughs took advantage of it. And the Longhorns are going to have a 4-2 lead now here in the top of the 11th inning. That's going to put the Tigers in a spot. And there's Burroughs eyeing that pitch the whole way in. I'm not sure why he's waving it off to the right, probably hoping to go over the short side of the fence. Um, but it does. It curls around 427 feet coming off his bat at about 106 miles per hour. Got a hold of that. There was nothing that could stop that ball from traveling. 
And so now with the two-run lead, Will Roberts comes to the plate. Bases are empty. No outs here in the top of the 11th inning. And Roberts batting two for four on the evening as well. And Ryan delivers that pitch. Roberts hits it right up the middle. It'll be fielded by their shortstop and thrown over to first. Roberts will be out number one in this part of the inning here. So now one out in the top of the 11th, Curtis White, who's 0 for 3 in the game so far. Looking to get that first hit. He is a switch hitter, batting from the right side of the plate now against the lefty Ryan as the first pitch comes in out of the zone for a ball. 1-0 is the count. So beat Ryan gets set and delivers the 1-0 pitch. Curtis swings and lines that one right up the middle. Dang near took off the Ryan's head as White is now standing on first. That had to be a little bit of fear in his eyes coming in as White just blasted that one right back at Ryan, and he's standing on first base now. So one out, one on for the Longhorns here in the top of the 11th inning. The game is 4-2 to two here as Auburn decides to bring in Shannon O'Neill. And now I didn't see it, but let's take a look at how we got that second run to tie it up. And that came in the second inning with a home run by Viegas. A no-doubt shot to right field as he blasted it away. It was such a horrific blast they had to cover with the green screen right there. So now back at the plate, Viegas. One for four with only the solo shot there in the second inning. He comes in, and the first pitch is going to be pitch out. Shannon O'Neill being careful with White at first. He also has a lot of speed and a big capability to make a move and now O'Neill gets set and he's slide step delivered that one that should have been blasted out of here but Viegas did not expect it and so he just lets that one go by count is even at one and one and O'Neill comes home White takes off and he's going to be sliding in and they drop the ball oh wow he probably would have been out great play by the catcher to get it there but the shortstop just could not field it properly and Curtis White's going to get in with the stolen base at second, but thanks to the drop ball by the guy at second. And now we got a runner in scoring position, and Viegas blast a line drive up the middle, but it's too quick to, for even White to get moving over. So Viegas gets out, is out number two here in the top of the 11th inning, and that brings up Mike Ellis. He's coming to the plate one for four on the evening so far. Two outs here, top of the 11th. First pitches, shot right up the middle, and that's going to get down for a hit. And here he comes home, Curtis White across the plate. It is now 5-2. to two. Longhorns lead over Auburn in this one. What a clutch display by Ellis. He's one of our young guys, but he is coming through majorly for us in that number eight spot as that one just barely got down. Now that's going to bring up Justin Credible, who's 0 for 4 on the day, kind of struggling at the plate here against Auburn. And that first pitch is going to be lined to the left field. It gets down, so he will get his first hit of the day and be 1 for 5. Glad he's able to get that one. He's been struggling, getting solid contact, just unable to uh, carry it past the defense. So now Mariano Vasquez, who's 1 for 5, comes for his sixth at bat. And oh, my goodness. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. First pitch swing, and that thing was out of here in a hurry. No doubt shot about it. Definitely didn't carry as much as Burroughs did, but the second home run of the inning, this time it goes for three runs as Vasquez blasts a 412-foot shot to left field on the first pitch. He left that off speed just hanging right over the center, and that was all that needed to be done was just swing the bat, and the Longhorns have increased their lead drastically. Eight to five now, or eight to three, or two. <laughs> eight to two here in the top of the 11th inning. That one went 412 feet over the left field wall, and that's going to force the Tigers to bring in another reliever. We are cutting through their relieving staff, and hopefully that just works out for the better for us. Um, as we can kind of wear their guys down so later in the series they're not going to have much available. So now Bill Hamill is going to come to the plate now, batting one for four on the afternoon, a single, and he did score a run early. And so now he's facing off against Houseman. The first pitch was for a ball, and the second one comes high for a ball as well. The count is 2-0 and to Hamill here with the six run lead now as the offense has just exploded here in the 11th inning and he's going to hit a blooper over to right field he dives and he doesn't make the catch this time it seems like they've always made the catch but he's going to lay out for it 
And luckily he stops it. If that ball had gotten past him, Hamill's going to be a third, or depending on who has to go get it, he could have gotten all the way around at that point. But look at this. Almost a great play by the right fielder. He stops it, though, and he gets himself up and gathered and gets the ball into second. So there are still two outs here in the top of the 11th inning, and Hamill's going to take off, and he's going to be safe by a mile right there. The houseman didn't even look at him, it seemed like, and Hamill's going to get his 10th stolen base of the season in this one. That's an amazing, aggressive move here by the Longhorns. Six-run lead in the top of the 11th inning as Houseman delivers it, and that's going to be lined over to right field. Hamill, he's going to round third again. He's coming home one more time, sliding across, and he's safe. Bill Hamill safe at second. Oh, my goodness, that got me choked up a little bit just seeing that happen. What a run. What an aggressive maneuver. Hamill and these Longhorns are being aggressive on the base path. We have guys with a lot of speed, and now we're starting to use it. And the Longhorns have officially batted around as Scott Burroughs is back at the plate for his second at bat in this inning now. Longhorns lead 9-2 to two as we have just exploded and become unstoppable in this one. Burroughs is 3-5 for five with that two-run blast eight batters earlier. And that, that one's going to be grounded up the middle. They will be out at second, and the Tigers will get out of this inning. I mean, thankfully they did. A damage done. Nine runs now on 15 hits total to Auburn's two runs on seven hits, and that would actually end the game right there. Now, Auburn would try to make a valiant comeback. Um, they would get up. They'd put up four runs. But Longhorns, long story short, Longhorns win. Nine to six in this game. Offense was explosive, especially coming into the the eleventh inning, and it really got explosive for both teams. So, as much as you say seven runs in one inning seems unstoppable, it you know we needed it. <laughs> we needed those seven runs. That's just, I mean we won by three, and we put up seven in the ninth or in the eleventh. So a lot of good plays being made here at the play by the Longhorns. Highlighting some of Auburn's good defensive plays as they dove down there in right field, made a great stop, which would have prevented us from going, uh, which prevented us from finishing it off in regulation. However, we take the first game of the series, and that will lead us here to game number two as we are in the top of the ninth inning here with a 3 1 lead over the Tigers. Mariano Vasquez to the plate, and he's 0 for 4. Facing off against Pete Ryan, who we saw yesterday, as we do have, let's see, He's batting 200 with a runner in scoring position, and we have a runner at third. Now Vasquez is going to dribble that one up the middle, and it gets through, and the run will score. So we're going to extend this lead out to 4-1 to here in the ninth inning. Vasquez keeping the inning alive. That is something we have started doing a lot more, is keeping these innings alive, and we're starting to see runs cross the plate. Before, we could get guys on base, but would never finish it off. Now we are actually starting to drive them home, so it's great to see from our offense. Now Joe Burris, who plays in the outfield, comes in to bat, and the first pitch to him is going to be across the middle uh, for a strike, so 0-1 is a count. And Ryan will check Vasquez over at first, and then he delivers the 0-1 pitch. Burris drives that one up the middle, and that's going to get through. Looks like we have got his time, and Vasquez goes over to third, and they're going to call him safe. Oh, <laughs> wow. Another big change for this season from last season is the amount of aggressiveness we're seeing on the base path. Now Ramirez, he blasts one deep to left center field. It's gone. Oh, my goodness. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Crystal ball Ramirez, you've got to be kidding me. He just got a hold of that one. I didn't think it was going to make it, but 404 feet is where it goes to left field and has separated this one out again. We were held back in the first half of the game pretty much all the way through, and then we came in here to the ninth inning, and once again, their relievers had to break down at some point. Right, we got an eye for them. We've got their timing down, and you're starting to see a lot of repeat guys like Pete Ryan get blasted. Now here comes Shannon O'Neill. Longhorns lead 7-1. to one. And Curtis White's going to hit a grounder over too short, and he's going to fire that one on to first, and that's going to end our half of the ninth inning. But Cristobal Ramirez, a surprise home run there as he gets a hold of that one, and the Longhorns now lead 7-1. to one. It's seven runs on 12 hits to one run for the Tigers' six hits. 
And that would be all there is to this game. Game number two in the books, thanks to a powerful ninth inning uh, by Ramirez, by Vasquez. A lot of these guys coming through in the clutch. That's excellent to see. So Longhorns win 7-1. Like I said, 12 runs on 7 hits. As the Tigers had 1 run on uh, 12, 7 runs on 12 hits. The Tigers had 1 run on 7 hits. So now here comes game number 3. As Bill Hamill is at the plate, this time batting in the cleanup position here in the top of the first inning. As he's facing off against David Alessio. As Thornton and Gonzalez are over there at uh, second and third, respectively. Now, Hamill is facing a 1-0 count, batting 273 his first time in the cleanup spot. And he's going to hit a grounder right up the middle. At least one run is going to score. Here comes a second run. They fire at home. He slides across safe. Longhorns lead 2 to nothing. Oh, my goodness. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. And the aggressiveness continues, and it is paying off for us big time. Hamill delivers on his first at bat from the cleanup spot right up the middle, and it gets through, and two runs will score, and that gives us an early 2 to nothing lead. So now here comes Kenny Falk in the top of the first inning, batting fifth in our lineup, sporting a 227 batting average to face off against Alessio. Now remember, Hamill is at first, so he does have a lot of speed. We may look to get him moving. As Alessio delivers the first pitch, and Hamill, or not Hamill, but... <laughs> That one's driven down the right side, and it's going to go foul. Kenny Falk here is keeping alive, swinging a little late. Need to get his timing down, but Hamill takes off. Hamill slides in a pretty poor throw, but he would have been safe by a mile either way. Bill Hamill mark another one to his tally as he is just racking up the stolen bases. So Kevin Falk, or Kenny Falk, facing a 2-1 and one count. He's going to swing and hit that one high fly to center field. Is it going to get down? And it does. Center fielder was under it. But that's only the second out of the inning as Hamill takes off towards third. Probably could have tried to go for home with his speed and that momentum going, but did not want to risk it. You hate kind of getting caught and ending a half inning on a play like that, especially when Will Roberts is coming to the plate. 234 on the season with 22 RBIs. Facing off against Alessio. And he delivers the first pitch home. And that one's line drive up the middle. Hamill will score. Will Roberts... Oh, wow, these Longhorns are really getting going here in the offensive side of the game as they are taking advantage of the pitches that are coming in and putting on good, solid swings. We're not seeing a whole lot of guys swing for the fences because you don't need to always do that to score runs. Now, Jose Viegas comes to the plate, batting 279, as we do have Will Roberts over there on first base waiting to try to be advanced up. Two outs still in the top of the first inning. Longhorns do lead three to nothing. Though it's early in the game, and you like having this type of lead come up this quick. Second pitch is lined out to right field as they will make that catch, and that's going to end the top half of the first inning. Longhorns lead three to nothing. Three runs on three hits for the Longhorns, and that's a way to get an inning started. Now we're going to advance on up to the top of the sixth inning. Longhorns are only leading by one run now, three to two. But not anymore. Will Roberts, first pitch. No doubt about it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. He got a hold of that one and blasted it 431 feet. My goodness. These relievers are getting destroyed by our lineup here. We have got an eye for him, and we are taking advantage. Will Roberts blast that one. Seems like a little home run competition to left field between the Longhorns is happening right now. As Roberts got a hold of it, it came, it went out quick. 431 feet at about 110 miles per hour coming off that bat. You'd love to see that happen as Longhorns now lead four to two in the top of the sixth inning, and there are zero outs here so far. Now that will bring Jose Viegas to the plate, one for two with a single in the fourth inning. And he's facing off against Freddie Trowbridge, who's getting trying to get this Auburn team calmed down. And he will fly out to left field and be the first out of the inning. Trowbridge, he's known for having a lot of speed for the most part on his pitches, so sometimes he can be a struggle to catch up with. Um, so we've got to be careful with him and maybe let him throw some. And the more he throws, the more tired he will get. So now with a 4-2 lead, Luis Manuel, our catcher, comes to the plate. 
And he's going to hit a line drive to left field, but that's right at the fielder. Good swing, good contact. Just right at the man, and he's out number two. So that brings up Justin Credible, who's one for two on the day, two for 11 in the series. A little bit of a struggle, but he's had some clutch hits come through for us. And he's going to step to the plate, let that first pitch bounce off the plate for a ball. He does have nine home runs on the season with some surprising power as he's tied for the most home runs on the team. And there's one, a hit to the left field side, and it will drop down, so he is going to be on base as he gets another hit, two for three for him on the afternoon. Another single right there, and that brings up Curtis White here at the top of the lineup, 0 for 2 on the day, seeing if he can't make something happen. The first pitch comes in for a ball at 96 miles an hour, high out of the zone. And so 1-0 and 0 is the count. Trowbridge gets set. He checks on Credible. And pitch out right there as they try to catch Credible sneaking. He's got a lot of speed. His, I mean, his steel capability, he still needs to work on that, and we need to refine that a little bit for him. Uh, but he gets a late jump, and White has to swing at that one. And that one's going back to right field, and they will make the catch at the warning track. And I really think I didn't really want to swing with him at that, but White had to swing just because it looked like Credible would have been caught um, if he had stolen the base. And so now we're going to jump back up with Credible at the plate here in the count. Or the score is now still 4-2 to two in this game in the top of the eighth inning. One out, two men on. Credible two for three on the day and fouls off that first pitch coming from Colin Hausman. We saw him in the other games as well. Credible batting 161 with runners in scoring position. Definitely need to get that kind of fixed up. And that'll help a line drive up the middle. And we're going to round third, and that one's going to bring home an RBI as he slide. Doesn't even slide, didn't need to. As he steps on home plate, the Longhorns now lead 5-2 to two here in the top of the eighth inning. As just incredible is putting together a just incredible performance this afternoon. Blasting that one right up the middle. He's now going to be three for four on the day. And with that one RBI. So Curtis White comes to the plate one out in the inning as he's got a man on first and second with a position to extend our lead just a little bit further. White lets that first pitch go on the outside edge for a strike. So here comes Hausman with the 0-1 delivery. And the pitch is outside for a ball with that cutter. He's got a lot of speed on it. But hey, it was outside for a ball, so count is evened up 1-1. One to one. So Hausman comes home with the pitch, and that one's outside. Once again, losing a little bit of his control here. His confidence is kind of shot in front of his home crowd, and that's a lot of guys there watching him make these things happen. Count is 2-1 and one to White. And he gets set and delivers a pitch. White fouls that one. A hard grounder right past the first base side on foul ball, though. So the count is now evened up two and two apiece here with one out in the top of the eighth inning. And the delivery. White hits a line drive to right field. And he dives and makes the catch this time. Ooh, good thing we didn't go for it. What a play by the right fielder. Clay Moore, and he actually hurt himself on there. They're going to have to replace him. He stayed down, and so they do remove him from the game, and Christopher Strong is going to take his place there in right field. Now here comes Mark Gonzalez to the plate. He's one of our backup guys. He's 0 for 4 on the day, but he's getting his chance to play. Runner at first and second still, and Gonzalez grounds that one right up the middle, and they throw it over to first, and that's how this inning is going to end. Gonzalez going 0 for 5. But damage done. Just incredible with a just incredible hit. I love saying that as he blasts that one right up the middle, right past the pitcher. No chance to get it, and he gets an RBI. So we do have five runs on 13 hits here in this one. So now we're going to come in at the bottom of the ninth inning. We are leading 6-3 to three as we bring in Robbie Baker to close this one out. And the first pitch to Roger Cortez, who's one for three on the day, comes in for a strike at 0-1. So Baker gets set and delivers it, and that's going to be fouled off down the left field side. So the count is now 0-2 to Cortez, needing to protect the plate. Baker delivers. And that's going to be a high pop-up. Credible is going to get up underneath it. Easy can of corn type of play. Out number one. Three pitches, one out. You love to see that from your closer. Get these innings over with quickly. And that was a good way to start it, especially with a three-run lead, knowing that they can come back. 
You know, we saw him do that in the other game when we won 9-6. to six. But we cannot dance around these guys. Robbie Donnelly, who's 0 for 2, comes to the plate. First pitch to him is going to be a strike. And the 0-1 delivery is a swing and a miss. And Baker's coming right at these kids with no fear in his eyes or anything. And here comes the 0-2 delivery. Swing and a miss. Strikeout number one for Baker as he gets out number two in the bottom of the ninth inning. So we are one out away from a complete sweep. A complete sweep of the defending national champions. Now we just played Florida State and we just got swept by them. So now we came up against the other team in the World Series and we're about to put it to them, the defending champions here. First pitch to Christopher Strong, who's batting 288 on the season, comes in for a ball in the second one. He doesn't chase to the outside, so the count is one and one. Now Baker gets set and delivers the next one. It's a high pop-up, credible. Runs out to the outfield, and he gets underneath that one, and that'll end the game. Longhorns win. Longhorns sweep the Tigers here in their home stadium in Auburn. What a game and what a series this has been. The offense is coming through. These guys are hitting a stride, and that's what we want to see. The Longhorns get six runs on 14 hits with one error, while the Tigers have three runs on five hits. The offense is exploding. Our relievers are starting to actually come through. Our relievers are putting up some good performances. That was a problem for us last season. A little bit early on in the year, it was an issue for us, but they are starting to develop and make a statement that they are trying to become one of the best sets of relievers that a team could have. And they are working really well towards that, towards that movement. Baker closed it out. You can't say much more about that young man, getting that strikeout, getting the guys to pop out get the easy outs when they can. So the Longhorns will win. We will sweep the Tigers. And on that note, just if you have not hit the subscribe button, why don't you go ahead and hit that one. And if you did like today's video, give us a thumbs up because it really does help out the channel. And we greatly appreciate everything that y'all do for us here at Champ and Sons. And as always, I want to thank y'all for all the support y'all have shown this series and the channel over the last couple months. It's amazing. I can't thank y'all enough. I am so grateful for that. So stay tuned as we take on some other teams going on here as the season continues, and I will see y'all in the next episode, everybody. So as always, stay safe, and well, y'all know how it goes, right? Later, y'all.